been a historic day across the country in the USL Championship, and tonight we bring you to Widener Field as the Colorado Springs Switchbacks take on Sacramento Republic, presented by Widener Apartment Homes. Alongside Ryan Davis, I'm Jack Edwards in the broadcast booth for this one. First off, Ryan, for the Switchbacks, three defeats on the season, still on the search for their first point this year. Yeah, the problem is converting chances. They are creating enough chances, but converting them and if by lack of scoring goals means the defense now is completely under pressure as he scores either 0-0 or they're down a goal. Hence the reason they've found themselves in trouble for the last three matches. Over four expected goals, just one actual goal through these first three matches. We can look at one of their key players to watch out for in this one. It's Malik Foster. He'll be your Modelo Keg 1 player to watch entering into this match. Slippery when wet, he can take players on 1v1 and create chances and space for other players. Now Malik has to step up and get the ball in the back of the net tonight. However, he does the right things by creating opportunities for others, so he's always going to be effective and dynamic in 90 minutes. He's again some former teammates, played for Sacramento in 2021 and 2022, had four goals and four assists in 2023. On the flip side now for Sacramento, it's been a strong start for them, still unbeaten, eight points through their first four games. Well, the exact opposite happened. They needed a goal scorer in the offseason, and they got one in Trevor Amman. And what did he do? He repaid them with three goals in four games so far, and they are off and running, which means they're either in the lead or the score is level when he's on the pitch. And Trevor Amon returning to Colorado, played in 2023 for the Northern Colorado Hailstorm, breaking all sorts of records in the USL League One, coming in this year, picking up right where he left off, 23 goals in 2023, setting the league record there, three goals through four games as the man up front for Sacramento. It's been a fantastic start to the year for them. We'll see how this one plays out here today. The first points is the goal for James Chambers in match number four as they re return home for the first time in several weeks. The matchup should be tight between the two sides. After this break, we can look at the lineups for these two teams and we'll have kickoff between Colorado Springs and Sacramento Republic when we come back on ESPN+. Plus. Thank you, Jay Chimino. You are the true champion. Thank you, Jay, for your vision of creating a new state park, for letting your spirit shine, and always putting people first. And being a friend to all. This April, we're saying thanks, Jay, and continuing his legacy of giving back. For every car sold, we'll make a donation to five community-focused organizations. Our thank you to an extraordinary man. Injured in a crash? Get McDivitt and you get a firm dedicated to every single detail of your case. We have the knowledge and resources to investigate the crash and your insurance company's small print. Details matter. That's why we dive deep into every aspect of your case. This gives us the firepower we need to make the insurance company pay you the money you deserve. We never ask you to pay a penny until we get you max money for your injuries. Online at McDivittLaw.com. McDivitt. Today's player walkout is sponsored by Children's Hospital Colorado. Colorado Springs switchbacks taking on Sacramento Republic. In today's matchup, we can look now at our starting lineups. First off for the hosts, both lineups brought to you by Phil Long. Two changes from that match last time out at San Antonio FC. Wahab Akwe, Jairo Enriquez coming in. It's a debut for Akwe in that back line. Yeah, let's see if he gets drifts out right wide to that right-hand side or he stays put in the center-back lineup. Also, looking at Hanya, he's going to drift out to the left-hand side and play that left wing back role. Probably see Henriquez come up just behind Damas and Foster and see if he can create some opportunities for those guys on top. A few tweaks here for James Chambers. We'll see how it plays out. That's the starting lineup for the host brought to you by Phil Long. On the flip side, 
Undefeated, it means you're in a pretty good groove. The 3-4-3 is unchanged. Also, a lineup brought to you by Phil Long. Those two guys out wide, Sanchez and Gurr, they want to go out wide with those two guys, maneuver the ball up the field, then bring the ball back inside, whether it's a cross or a ball back onto the feet of Felipe and Ross with the two wing backs. Sanchez and Gurr makes his team run. They're unchanged from that 1-0 win over Memphis 901 FC. It was an 87th minute winner from Jonathan Ricketts off of the bench. He's on the bench yet again today after his game winner one week ago. Looking at the pitch now, you can see in their home black kits are Colorado Springs switchbacks. Interesting talking to James Chambers ahead of this one, Ryan. A side that has lost all three games, but he was still very buoyant about the confidence the group is feeling right now. When you have players like Devon Speedy Williams, you have Matthew Mahoney, real character guys, Christian Herrera in goal, they are easy. They're easy to work with, even in pressure situations. And they're the type of characters you want in the dressing room in tough sports like this. The flip side for Sacramento. A similar group to last year. They finished first in the Western Conference, got all the way to the Western Conference Finals, losing to Phoenix Rising this year. A very strong group. And we mentioned it in the open, bringing in Trevor Ammon just makes that group that much stronger. This team is built to win now, not to rebuild. They are in contention from MLS to team next year. So they want to have another stellar performance. That's why most of their players are in that peak stage between the ages of 24 and 29. Sacramento Republic are here to win it in 2024. Just waiting for the whistle from Brad Jensen to get us underway. And their black kits heading from left to right are Colorado Springs. And in the whites, their alternate kits are Sacramento Republic from right to left. And we're underway from Widener Field. It's Jack Edwards and Ryan Davis here in the broadcast booth with you. Early ball down the channel and early offsides. And the flag goes up. Just one goal scored over four expected goals. Kind of talking about what they need to do today and the attacking third. What kind of do you view for this one, Ryan? So many people talk about when you do have the ball, but you're actually going to get yourself out of trouble when you don't have the ball. The intensity, the pressure by Colorado can disrupt the Sacramento backline while they're in possession. You get a quick turnover, you get an opportunity, you convert. All of a sudden, you're up 1 0 when you did not have the ball. Danny Vitiello over this free kick after the early offsides against Colorado Springs. They themselves coming off of a 2-0 defeat at San Antonio two weeks ago now, had some time to think. Back to Christian Herrera in goal. Here is your injury report brought to you by Common Spirit Health. None reported for Colorado Springs. Sebastian Herrera out for this one for Sacramento. Switch of play, aiming for Hanya. He'll get on to it. Foster driving. This pass just behind his teammate. Captain Matt Mahoney. Now this is when Speedy Williams gets to operate. He's like the Jamaican Xavi or the USL Xavi in this league. He pulls his strings and makes his team tick. Clever ball out wide by Ammon, and now it's Sacramento on the break. Pass there, aiming forward. It's just about intercepted. Enriquez slides it off. Also keys to the game, simple intensity and composure. Walk me through those keys, Well, Ryan. we just saw a quick snapshot of that, the intensity by Colorado pushing players forward, looking for that first goal. But then Sacramento on the other end is such a savvy group. They're going to be composed and try to get around that pressure as we saw that quick counter-attack. Didn't pay out with a quick little snapshot of the game and what we expect to see for the full 90 minutes. Was a goal for James Chambers entering this one, score that first goal, get themselves into a positive vein. Moving forward, these sides met back in September of 2023 here at Widener Field to finish in a 2-0 win for Colorado Springs. First fixture last year was a 4 0 win at home for Sacramento. So last year's form, the home sides having the better end of things. We'll see how today's matchup plays out, of course. Here's Mahoney. You know, momentum is everything in a locker room. And with this Colorado team just staring down the barrel of a gun, and a new player, Aqui, coming into the formation, let's see how he can pay off and change things in that back line. That one just behind goes out of play. Goal kick in the end. But yeah, just going back to Colorado, it's just going to take a little bit of brilliance or a little spark of luck to sort of change that feeling, that feel-good feeling with the, um, the players in black tonight because they've had so many things go the opposite direction for them in the opening three matches. It's just going to take literally 15 seconds of luck or just a break.
Vitiello goes long with the goal kick. Felipe nodding it on. M in the target, but Akwe getting there in front. Williams, clever work through that pressure. We were wondering where Akwe would be positioned. Currently in the center of that back three as that long ball forward just about roped in by Echeverria. Enriquez, he hasn't taken off his foot. And now it's back with Sacramento. Look at the way that Sacramento sort of corrals their opponents. And look at that ball spread out wide. Brilliant counter. Great work here. There's a few forward and white. It's rolled off into the box. They're standing off, rolled back. Ammon, a great opportunity here. He places it home. Fourth of the season, Trevor Ammon. The first shot of the match, the first chance of the game, and Sacramento lead on the road. Well, tip your hat to Russell Cicerone. He took the pressure off. He brought the ball into the box. But what about the finish by Ammon? It's like sipping a cup of tea, chamomile if you like. Took his time, dribbled past the first guy in the first touch. Here's Cicerone being aggressive taking the ball down the throat of the Colorado defense. Looks up out of the, the corner as I picks out Aman. There's the fake. And look at this finish, Jack. As easy as you like. And Sacramento riding high on Colorado still groveling. Good angle there. Just the patience shown by the forward. Mentioned him in the open. 23 goals in the league in USL League One, making the bump up to the championship. He moves himself to tied for second in the league with goals four already this year. Now how do Colorado Springs respond to this one? One, two played. Enriquez slides it off. Echeverria back to Williams. And here's Mahoney. Big challenge to deal with that. Goal scorer, Ammon rolling it off. It's a dangerous ball. Ciceroni. Herrera will come off his line and do just about enough. Super keeper action to clear that out of play. Well, goals change matches, and immediately Colorado gets back on the front foot, but the space is behind the back line when they do come forward. And Sacramento, they're not getting pressure on the ball, Colorado, so Sacramento is getting a chance to pick out the long ball and create those long ball counters. Ronaldo Damus on the press there, but it's played back. Lee Desmond. Lopez just knocking that one forward. Akwe going highest. Musa. This long one is a hopeful one for Damos to chase. Referee will whistle for a foul. Just too much power put in there by Damos. Don't mind that. You want that from your center forward. You want the center back to be rubbing his ankles at home tonight with some ice. Damos understands what this team's need. This team needs. They need intensity, and he applied that. Yes, the whistle was blown, but you want to see that all game long within number nine. Just slightly too overzealous in the challenge. Now it's back with Desmond. He can carry it forward. He's trying to make a probing pass to Sanchez. Herrera under hit on the ball forward. And that's going to bounce kindly for Sacramento Republic. Cicerone, he can line one up from distance. And Herrera, first save of the match. At the moment, it just seems too easy for Sacramento in the middle of the park. Cicerone just picked up that ball. There was no one around him. He got the shot off. It seems like Colorado, Speedy Williams, for one, has to start closing in on the ball. Yes, he's great with the ball, but without the ball, the intensity has to pick up in the middle of the park. Or else it's going to be a long night for Colorado. Here's Williams on the ball. We got Musa, it's a clever pass. He's got some room to run into, and he's also got Damos as an option into the 18. That one rolling just too quick. Goes out, goal kick. Excellent defending, just a little bit of shoulder badge, get Damos off balance. That's prototypical center back play. Both teams lining up in this one with three at the back formation, slightly different variations of them, but It'll be interesting to see how those match out in this match. You love the three at the back because you're always safe in the middle of the park in front of your, well, let's say in front of your 18-yard box. So it's a very secure position to be in with three at the back. And then the wide guys have to cover so much ground, though, Jack, on that left and right-hand side. That's where the soft spot is. That one taking an odd curl, a heavily windy day, over 25-mile-an-hour winds. 
at Widener Field will be a factor to watch out for. It's played up for Desmond. And he's just going to go longer up the pitch. Akwe will get there. And it was taking an interest, but get it to Williams. And he's got Musa. Malik Foster. Said it in the open, but a former Sacramento player. He's fouled. And you look at Malik Foster, you see the, the tricks on the ball, but that's just his his MO. He has to do the shifty sort of plays. A little bit injured at the moment, but you want to get him on the ball, have him turn on the defense and create something. Injury stoppage brought to you by Common Spirit Health as Malik Foster in just a moment to collect himself. You can see again the challenge put in here. Yeah, there's his shake, but that's how he gets himself, his rhythm going in the game with those extra touches. Rodrigo Lopez, captain for Sacramento Republic, bringing him down. Long going forward, Vitiello off his line. He'll collect. Just the two shots in this match so far, both going the ways of the visitors, and the most crucial one, of course, Trevor Ammon with the goal five minutes into the game, has us separated a 1-0 edge for Sacramento. Desmond, was he fouled? Referee says yes, he was. Enriquez barging him through the back. Opening 10 minutes of this match, we expected Colorado again at home to be the aggressors. Possession counts 62%, but we talk about quality possession. Sacramento being more penetrative with their possession and creating two chances already, of course, converting one. Ross. Gurr, Ross, picks out Ammon. He'll roll it into the feet of Gurr. Ciceroni just couldn't quite bring that into his spell. Musa trying an ambitious flick, and he turns it back over. Curled into the box, and it's going to come through. That's a clever ball in just behind the foot of a teammate. You saw the idea there from Rodrigo Lopez to just try and dink that one into the box. He has eyes where eyes are no longer part of the anatomy, Rodrigo Lopez. Picks out Ciceroni, cutting inside. He's 36 years savvy, attacking midfielder. Here comes the cross. Colorado does not deal with it. And this is the wrong man you want in front of your box with the ball. Little dink inside, like you said, just behind the player. Akwi, Williams. Try that one. Damus might have been the target, but that one bending just out of his range. It's cleared forward. Moose's header finds a friendly foot. It's good work now. Anya into the box. Malik Foster turns that ball just overhit a bit. And Moose will have to be careful in a foot race with Ciceroni. Malik Foster just now, just putting the ball back in the mix-up. Didn't really take his time to look up and look, look for any black shirts. Lopez, back to Ciceroni. You can see the run at the bottom of your screen. Potentially one to watch out for in Sanchez. Ciceroni, allowed to enter the 18. Important intervention, just coming across by Hanya to get across Ammon. But again, you saw the confidence of Ciceroni taking the ball right into the 18-yard box. It fell to the feet of Rodrigo Lopez. He tried to dink it across to Amon again. But again, Ciceroni, confidence all day long. Foster the target, but that one just overhit. And the throw in for the visiting side. Ciceroni completed the most dribbles than any other player in the last match against Memphis, and so far in the opening 12 minutes, he's just been unstoppable. Just out of Colorado Springs end of things with his dribbling, Ryan, do you want to see them try and step to him a bit more aggressively, or what, what tweaks do you make to try and deal with that threat? Well, I think it all started in the middle of the park. Ciceroni is getting the service from the middle of the park because there is no pressure there. So I think that's where you have to begin. Stop the service, stop the supply chain to Ciceroni, and I think you'll take care of the problem. Don't wait for it to get to Ciceroni's feet then react. Interesting. Here 
There is Aqui is Colorado Springs. You mentioned it, Ryan, enjoying the majority of possession. But they have been restricted to areas like this. Very good defensive side, Sacramento are. Just 26 goals conceded in 2023. Coming into this year, two clean sheets already. Foster. Wow. Great bit of footwork. Malik Foster going to the byline. He was knocked down, but the referee says it was good defending, and it's a goal kick. Well, this is what we've learned to expect from Malik Foster. As tricky as they get, and I think he lost the battle with the billboard. Yeah. That's but one that you seldom win. So good, 1v1. Invites the player to the pub, gives him the wrong address, leaves him standing, and again, good cover by Desmond at the back, using that shoulder. Sorry, Donovan, that's what you need to do. You can then come across, cover his player, and just corral the player out of bounds. Some good defending in the end. It looks simple, Jack, but it's not. It's all no. about the angles and time, then you run the first center back. I mean, he already saw his teammate get spun, you know, just a moment ago. Had to be very well timed to ensure he didn't give a penalty and a great route back into the game for Colorado Springs. Duels between the fullbacks. It's won by Sanchez. Desmond now. Felipe. Felipe again with it. Jared Timmer. So Colorado, we mentioned at the beginning, Jack, to change their fortune, what do they do when they do not have the ball? So all eyes on them with their intensity defensively. Can they create a turnover? Can they create a counter press situation? Right now they're down in a low block, which is fine. But let's see how compact they get right now to snuff things out while they're in a low block. Enriquez took an interest, but it's just about dealt with by Ross. Donovan. Desmond. Cicerone dropping into a left wing back role, but again, capable to dribble. Plays a dangerous ball. Slipped in. Gurr. Flag goes up, though. The chance is gone. Looked tight, but may have gone just a moment too early. Perfect if you're Sacramento. Gurr was the extra man. They overloaded on the right-hand side. And it was unforgivable, Girl, He has full vision of the centre-back, Girl. He has no reason to be offside. That is not the pass of Lopez. Girl has to stay onside because he's seeing the centre-back right across from him. And he has to time that run better. Fortunate for Colorado Springs that he was just a moment too soon with his run. Musa. Habakwi making his first appearance for his new side. He's coming in from Rio Grande Valley, where he was for 2022 and 2023. Mahoney, another former Sacramento player. Mahoney playing there between 2019 and 2020. Now, of course, captaining Colorado Springs. Here is Sac Republic. This is where Sacramento is so good. They have so many ball handlers on the pitch. They can play out of press, and then when they play out of the press, they're going to start dictating the pace now. They're up a goal to nil. So understand Colorado eventually has to come forward and be the aggressors, and they know that. Timmer, back to Donovan. Desmond picks out to Cerrone, who dropped off the front line. Slides it across, Lopez, Gurr, he's one-on-one. -on -one. His ball in, takes a deflection, out our first corner kick of the match. This corner kick, is brought, to you by Law Firm. This corner kick brought to you by McDivitt Law Firm. We are in your corner. The opportunity from the set piece for Sacramento to try and double their lead. Well, when you have big players like Lee Desmond and Connor Donovan coming up from the back, 
And a man like Rodrigo Lopez behind the ball. Look out. Five assists last year. The captain will take the out swinging corner kick. Or go short with it, rather. Ammon back to Lopez. Oh. Nice work to get some space at the byline. It's dealt with by Williams. And now Foster can just drive forward with some speed. Powers through there in the end. Referee playing advantage. Foster. Again, drawing in the contact, but skipping by it. Ciceroni, though, one challenge too many. He's so comfortable dribbling players, but he has to pick his spots. He got past one. He has he had Hanya out wide to lay it off. And now Malik Foster hits the deck. And this is not a good sight for James Shimmers. It's twice now that Foster has needed a moment to collect himself. He's back down on the ground. You can see him just feeling a bit of discomfort there. Injury stoppage brought to you by Common Spirit Health. Getting some attention now. We have seen it though a few times already this match, Ryan, just the moments of brilliance that he can have, Malik Foster, but also just bringing in the challenges. He's felt the effects of them several times already. You have to know when to hold and know when to fold. And I think Malik Foster needs to refine that a little bit in this early part of the season. I understand when a team is this far down. As we take a quick look at the replay. But I think the injury was way before that. Yeah. With the team's confidence this far down, he's trying to inject some life, trying to create something and create some space for the players. But sometimes, when you, sometimes less is more. Doesn't look like the sub is being prepped for Foster. Just needed a moment. It's a throw in for Colorado Springs, but they'll likely give it back to Sacramento after they sportingly played it out of touch to allow him a moment. They will indeed do just that. You know, you look at this organization, Sacramento Republic, and things really start from the top and floor all the way down. An incredible group leading this team, this organization. Understand that they won this USL Championship in 2014, and then they were the runners-up in the Open Cup just two seasons ago. And they are built right now again to contend, Jack, and you can see the veteran players with the players who are in their prime mixed together. If they're creating it, the ultimate soup, if you will. Year number five for Mark Briggs. Here's Trevor Ammon. He was the big offseason acquisition coming in from League One. Imagine a lot of championship sides had their eye on him after he lit up the third division. Sanchez across the box. It was dangerous. Musa got a foot to it. That one took an awkward bounce. And in the end, Herrera caught it. The wind again causing a factor here where it just makes a maybe routine clearance turn into a moment of near chaos. Well, if you looked at the scouting report, they're always going to look to go out wide. San the, as the play switched across, Sanchez just tucked in. But again, the wide player Sanchez getting on the end of it and delivering a good cross. So Gu and Sanchez, like we mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast, they are going to create the space for Ciceroni and Lopez to run into and find those open channels. Mahoney. Anya pulls it off, Williams. Knock away to Musa. You can see right side of your screen, Foster is back out on the field. Damus. That one rolling just too much. Making his fourth appearance since coming in on loan, looking for his first goal in his new colors. Love the idea of the direct play to Damos, then let him turn and create something, some space or a ball for another player. But when it rains, it pours Jack. He can't find a goal, his touch is off. It seems like it's raining every single day in the Damos house. It's that bad right now. 15 goals in 2023 with San Diego. They're hopeful that he can come in and replicate Romario Williams leaving, had 15 goals himself in 2023, now with Hartford Athletic. I feel like a very natural light for life replacement up front is a natural goal scorer. That's a dangerous ball. Enriquez. Damos, that one just off target. Takes a deflection, it did, and it's going to be out for a corner kick now. On the 
best moments of the match, though, up to this point. We can see it again. Just a great ball forward. Again, going direct to the attacking players as Enrique is just laying it off. And Damas, he has that speed to get the separation and the technique as well to put it on goal. This corner brought to you by Pepsi. Pepsi, that's what I like. And the first of the match now for the hosts. Jairo Enriquez. Whipped in, going through everybody. Maybe a chance to recycle. Williams, here's Malik Foster. He's gonna fire that one into the box. It's knocked out. May have been some half-hearted appeals for a handball. They'll get a corner in the end. Malik Foster's back on the pitch, trying to get on the end of that one. But let's talk a little bit about Jairo Enriquez. What an important role he has to create space for Damos and Foster. He's going to come inside, he's going to drift off that right-hand side, come to the middle and become that attacking midfielder for this Colorado team. And here he is with the set-piece. Corner brought to you by Pepsi. That Pepsi, that's what I like. Enriquez whips it in. That one was well dealt with defensively. Kicked off Akwe out for a goal kick. Enriquez also had a busy two weeks ago, played against Argentina all 90 minutes. The world champs and then played against Honduras for El Salvador, which is their marquee rivals in Central America. Foul. It'll be a free kick now for Sacramento Republic. Did I mention that Argentina the world champs, by the way? <laughs> Just a uh, little friendly reminder to everyone out there. In case you missed the World Cup a year and a half ago. Exciting times, of course. Two tournaments in the next three years to be able to see the reigning world champs on American soil. And a man they call Lionel Messi. Diminutive left footer, and I think there's a factory in Argentina that creates diminutive left footers. Um, but yeah, just incredible time to be an Argentine fan. It's a free kick now. Sacramento will go short. Lopez. We've seen the game kind of change state a little bit across this game. They've actually taken a possession edge. Sacramento now have 51 to 49 as Desmond, his pass will squeak through. Ross can roll it across. Ciceroni, he's got Gurr to the right-hand side, but he's got space for himself. Ciceroni into the box, he does it himself. Fantastic work from Russell Ciceroni. He gets his first of 2024 and doubles the advantage for Sacramento one of the best dribblers in the USL Championship, and he uses Arman as a decoy. Arman makes the run. If you look at it here, he picks it up, full of confidence, starts to take it down the throat. Arman makes the run to the right, creates the channel for Ciceroni, and once he gets there, Jack. Lethal. Lights out. Now it's 2-0, and Colorado are really staring down the barrel of a gun. And both of these goals, chances created by Ciceroni, his confidence to attack the channels, attack that space really puts teams on the back foot he's just dynamic exactly the start that mark briggs would have wanted after a dramatic win at home against memphis in the 87th minute getting their lone goal they've got two goals both of his forwards getting on the score sheet within a half hour and both of those goals like we mentioned to the keys of the match composure they get into that last third they don't panic they take their time use their technique and convert musa you mentioned just the difficulty that Colorado Springs are facing now. We'll see what response they have. Incredibly clinical start to the match for Sac Republic. Long ball forward. Malik Foster. He goes down in the box. There is a foul, but it's going to be going against Foster. Well. Foster wants it to continue, but looks like the defender misread the ball here, Jack. Look at this. He's on the other side of Malik Foster. I don't know. It's one of those things you'd like to see let go in this game. You're saying a no call there? I say a no call is the way to go. Referee may be looking at the arm by Foster as a potential reason for a foul, but it's again Sac Republic right back onto the attack. Lopez. Keeps that in play, digs out a good pass. And it's hooked away. And the wind will make that an uncomfortable clearance, but it bounces for Enriquez. Sanchez back to Desmond. 
Ammon, Cicerone. Fires that one up for Gurr, asking just too much of his wing back. He goes out of play for a throw. Yes, the ball was ahead of Gurr, but again, the system is in place and it's working well because Gurr did have the opportunity to find space and create for others. Foster. Hanya. That one taking just a bad bounce past Musa. Another throw now for Sac Republic. You mentioned the wind. It's just a big factor. Makes passes off the ground just that little bit different than it may be on a less windy day. Yeah, and nobody likes pressure, whether you're playing in your backyard or you're playing in the USL Championship. And you can see the back line for Colorado. Again, confidence is not there, Jack. So you see little mistakes like that start to add up. And all of a sudden, Sacramento have possession again. And they start to boss the ball. And now Colorado has to give chase. Donovan back to Timmer. Just clipped forward for Ammon. Akwe will come across. He'll deal with it. See to another throw in. Rolled off. This one's curled in and ends up arcing towards Herrera. So Sacramento awaiting a deal with the city to build a stadium for the MLS if they do get approved for next year. I'm guessing it's going to take a little bit more than a cake sale to get to, to, to bring up that money. But this team, as you can see, just their confidence and their technical skills on the ball, they really want an MLS side. They're asking the question, we're ready for an MLS side. And uh, really just something to have in the USL Championship. Here's Timmer, steps past Damus. Cicerone, first time pass. It's a good one, picks oh. out Gurr. It's a good first touch out of his feet. Cicerone, pass just off there, taken over, Enriquez. Again, one half the field. Maybe a chance to strike one, it goes over, Herrera. Barking at his defenders, giving too much space for Rodrigo Lopez to aim one towards goal. Well, Henriquez took too long on the ball. You never have that much time in the middle of the park in your own second third of the field. And Lopez, I think he just sort of snatched at it at the end, Jack. The ball sort of rolled away from him. Williams under pressure of two and white. Twelve works, left-hand side, Musa. Aiming for Damus, but Timmer's there first. See just the energy from Malik Foster trying to make life difficult. Vitiello gets there in time, but not after a bit of worry. Foster holding his face. He won't get anything there. And it's now dropped forward. Ammon, his header, just too heavy. And Akwe goes across him and deals with it. But you love that sequence from Colorado. You love that desperate sort of press. And yes, Foster's down again, but... He was leading that, that pressure just a little bit, a little while ago. Almost got Sacramento in trouble. But that's what Colorado is going to need to get out of this slump. They're going to need that effort, that extra bit of energy to create a mistake on the other end, on the defensive end for Sacramento. Seen in the top left of your screen, the stats so far. Just three shots for Sacramento. Two of them, though, have found the back of the net incredibly clinical so far. Possession very even, a slight edge for the visitors. There'll be actually a pause and play here. Malik Foster is getting yeah. some attention. He I think Malik, Malik Foster is going to be wrapped up in an ice pack <laughs> from head to toe. He's been by, by half time. He, he, on that instance, after sprinting the entire yes. length width wide of the pitch, he ended up coming up a bit short. Maybe gotten a, a bump to the face. He's still feeling the effects of that. He's been down a few times already. Jamaican. He's full of skill, and he is leading that press again. 
looks like you got an elbow right yep. in the gut. Yep. Just knocks the wind out of you. Especially when you've run 100 miles per hour <laughs> from sideline to sideline. This injury stoppage brought to you by Common Spirit Health. And a lot of these stoppages have been for Foster, who has just been incredibly involved, just getting his body on the line in these opening moments. Let's kind of take this moment, though, to reflect on the match so far. Obviously, just only three shots, or I think up to now four for Sacramento after that Lopez effort. Not a ton of shots, but very clinical when they're getting into that final third. Yeah, they, they're using that composure, like we said in, in the keys of the match. They're allowing Colorado's desperation to come onto them, and then they play around that, and the spaces behind the back three, or when those wing backs push up, that soft spot is right behind the wing backs. So they're pinging those diagonal passes to Ciceroni and company and Lopez, and that's where they're finding that space. And of course, Aman, he's just so lively. And when he gets the ball in that 18-yard box, well, look out. So Sacramento following their game plan and taking advantage of Colorado's over exuberance and capitalizing. For Colorado Springs, you know, a big factor will be if Foster can continue or not. He's been down a few times. We'll see if it's one time too many. What tweaks, what changes? It's a challenge. Obviously, tough road back against a very good defensive side like Sacramento, even if you're at home. I think you really want to simplify things. I know we have Hanya, who's playing on the right-hand side, but he's also a natural left footer. He can go to that left wing back spot and give them that natural width to progress the ball. Right now, it just seems to be very direct for Colorado. Get the ball to Henriquez, get the ball to Damas. But even when they do, Sacramento are doing such a good job in corralling them away from the dangerous spots. I think they have to be just a little bit more patient in build up. But then again, they have to use that natural width to progress the ball up the field. And I don't think they have that right now. About 10 minutes of the minimum, 45 in this first half still to play. Foster will come back in at the next break in action. Not going to be subbed out on this time round. Hanya gets ahead to it. Damus in the area. Foster, as you can see, back out on the field. And that is actually going to be a free kick for a challenge in the middle of the park. Damus is left in a heap, and it's a free kick for Sacramento Republic. A free kick for Colorado Springs, rather. Foul against Sacramento Republic. Lee Desmond just being physical and making sure that Damas knew exactly where he was. Now they're going against the wind here, Jack. I mean, the sort of delivery, the sort of mustard you have to put on this ball to get through that win. Enrique is going to have to strike this ball almost like a shot on goal just to get it through that win to the back post. 27 mile an hour wins. We'll see what factor that plays on this set piece opportunity. Enriquez put that one in and it's under hit, scraped away. Did I mention you said an entity win? Yes. Yes, that's a good ball on that instance. There's appeals for a handball. Referee waves it away. May have been a bit harsh. Williams heads it back. Had to get that right and he did. Anya. We'll take a look at it again. Just a ball in. Did that hit a hand? Ooh. Great tie, Jack. Good angle from our crew to show that one. Definitely would have been a tough one. How do you assess that when it's coming through, maybe expects it to hit somebody else, and it comes all the way and then hits the arm? Is that a handball? That is handball every day and twice on Sundays. Potentially a moment of that fortune. Means your arm was used as an advantage because that ball could have creeped through to someone else behind you. For a, for a goal scoring opportunity. Ciceroni, a chance to inflict further pain. Gurr puts it between the defender's legs. Can't beat Herrera. He stands tall and he's going to put a foot through it. Christian Herrera able to keep his side in it. It's still only 2 0. Well, again, Gurr taking advantage of that soft spot when Colorado pushed forward. Now here's Enriquez. He's got the run forward. His pass blocked. Echeverria maybe an option. He is still an option. He picks it up. Mahoney. Anya trying to just power past his opponent. He goes down under the challenge. Referee will give a foul actually against him. Again, love the idea of a no call in that situation, Jack. I don't think it was a penalty, but in the same breath, I don't think Anya fouled the defender. Being aggressive, taking on Sanchez, goes down. I think it's just a no call, goal kick. But referee calls for a free kick, nonetheless. Here's Gurr 
golden opportunity, an excellent save by Christian Herrera, making himself large. Despite all the losses so far for, for Colorado, Christian Herrera has been epic in goal. No fault of his own for the losses in the opening three matches, but another point blank save by the Colorado goalkeeper. James Chambers and Herrera have big belief in what he can do. You can see the wind just taking that ball elsewhere. He had 10 clean sheets across 27 starts in 2023. Obviously no clean sheet in this one. And actually we have got a sub already in this match. Juan Tejada coming on. As Danny Vitiel gets us back underway. Well, Juan Tejada is one of those versatile players. And looks like he's going to go up to that right wing forward, exactly where Malik Foster was playing. Foul committed. And again, the substitution brought to you by the William J. Hibble Sports Medicine and Performance Center. Learn more at hibblecenter.org. Juan Tejada coming on for Malik Foster. We talked about it all throughout this opening of the match. Very involved Foster was but also involved in just the collisions, and in the end, pulled off before the first half ends, probably slight injury related. Yeah, his, his style of play, he invites contact onto him, and boy, did he receive the contact in the opening. 13 minutes has to come off now. Juan Tejada, a busy player with a huge engine. He's gonna chase and press. He doesn't have the 1v1 skill like Malik Foster, but he certainly has the engine to cause problems with the press. May have been under hit. Important by Herrera to get that perfect, and he did. Ammon was on hand trying to make it two for him on the day, but it's taken over. And now on the other end, Tanya. So often we talk about goals on one end, what strikers do. That save by Herrera was as good as a goal. Yeah. That would have been 3 0, game over. Still a route back into the game, of course, for Colorado Springs. Ammon will collect this one. Was he fouled by Aqua? Yes, he was. We're going to look at this again, just. Herrera off his line, it was under hit by Akwe, and Herrera getting the challenge perfect to save his defender's blushes. Perfect, understand that Akwe, this is his opening minutes for him in this season, he hasn't played a minute before this match. Did not, the pass was way under hit, and this man Herrera, just making himself large, good technique, as you would say. You never want to see your goalkeeper having to get inch perfect slide tackles on the top of his 18, because if he gets that wrong, it's a goal, or potentially a red card. Red card yep. But he got, of the three results there, he got the best one for his side. And it's 11 v 11, still just 2-0. Musa, the header to Williams. And again, just to reiterate, Tejada coming on for Foster, so a first half sub for James Chambers and company. Tejada started last time out, was moved to the bench. His fourth appearance of 2024. It's a foul from behind. Maybe a bit of afters there, just boiling over. Maybe some things to deal with here is Tejada's on the ground holding his face. Several players down, both goalkeepers in the area and both benches heavily involved. It's Potentially, the game could turn in these final few moments. You think this match means a lot to Colorado? Boy, they are intense. They understand what they need. They have to get a point somehow in this match. Juan Tejada just came onto the pitch. He's already up to speed with the game. Here it is again. There's a collision. Enriquez. Enriquez, that's a foul. And he held, it was a knee to the back of the head. Yeah, definitely not going to call it intentional with that, but definitely not well appreciated, and may have been a tug down by Lopez, but. Nick Ross came across and said something with a very heavy Scottish accent. So the yellow card is out. I think, I think referee may have, it's Nick Ross. Yep, Ciceroni there it is. There it is, he got it right there now. Tejada appears to have been booked. Again, it's going to be Russell Ciceroni as well as Juan Tejada brought into the book. Yellow cards issued to Tejada and Ciceroni. Caution is sponsored by Diverse's Health, Mental Health, and Well-Being for All. Remember to take a moment to breathe. I think 
Everybody on the field needs to take a moment to breathe after that moment of insanity. Just a bit of chaos. And uh, it was very hard, especially with no VAR, no ability to kind of comb through every angle, who touched who, was this a red card? Feels like just yellows for one player on each team. Let's not do that again. Yeah, I think he's just trying to bring order back to the game. I understand what Brad Jensen, that's a tough, tough job to be in. Not only a referee, but you feel like you're also like you're parting a fight. Yeah. So again, Tahada coming on, just moments later, being heavily involved in the melee. He was booked, Ciceroni was booked. Ciceroni, of course, getting the second goal of the match. Trevor Ammon with the first of our match so far. We're back underway, free kick forward. We'll see how much stoppage time we have after that one. Two goals and, of course, that brief ruckus. We'll see what we have added on to the end of this first 45. Musa. It's rolled along. Echeverria goes back to Musa. Don was the target, but Donovan climbs highest, gets his head to it. Tejada, it's hooked away. Six minutes of additional time. Brought to you by TikTok Shop at the end of this first 45 minutes. Completely understandable. Malik Foster was down for about three out of that six minutes. And then we have that little squabble on the sideline to take up the rest. And of course, the two goal celebrations as well. So six minutes. We'll see if any moments of intrigue come during this stoppage time. Chance for either side to really kind of flip the script even further for the halftime speeches. Mahoney. Now Williams. It's squeaked forward. Flag goes up, though. Damus second best to that one, but the flag had gone up before. He could react to that. Ronaldo Damus just a fraction too quick with his run as it was bounced into him by Hanya. Well, Speedy Williams for once had some time in the attacking third. He just chips it over the top, little deflection, and the flick on was fantastic for Damus. Some appeals by those in Sacramento White that maybe there should have been a bit of discipline given to Damus for the shot attempt after, but was going for the ball. Whistle had gone anyways. Rarely happens. No discipline given. It is a free kick in the end. VTLO knocking us forward. Tejada trying to bring that one down into his stride. Gers puts a foot through it. That's going to, again, bend awkwardly. Akwe does just enough in the end to get it to Musa. The wind, a big factor. That's a foul from behind. Echeverria looked to have been fouled there by Ross. Another throw for the hosts. Bit of strength. Flag does go up though. Hanya was in an offside position. Well, it's Suka Hanya could play left wing back or right wing. They choose to play him right side today. Great job using his body. But again, the wide players, Jack, cannot afford to be called offside. They have full view of the center back. There's no reason to jump the gun. They can take the time and time they run knowing exactly where the center back is. Center back meaning the last player. Echeverria. Out of play, throw in for Sacramento. Big 
challenge by Enriquez, but actually was a foul in the end. Looked like he got the ball, but also got quite a lot of Sanchez. The referee going to offer a free kick. Well, the man from El Salvador is getting a little chippy. Enriquez is his second time within the next, last five minutes. It's been a, one of those niggly challenges when the ball is gone. So far, he's stayed out of the referee's book. Matt Mahoney pleading his case to Brad Jensen, our head official in this one. Is he Enriquez's lawyer? <laughs> in that case, he is <laughs> operated in that capacity. Clipped forward. Nothing coming directly from that free kick chance for Sacramento, who I think are very happy to ride this 2 0 edge into halftime. Try and just see this one out. Make it 11 points through five games. Still unbeaten, of course, in 2024. Musa steps past his opponent. Foul from behind. Uh, Cicero really doing his very best to be an annoyance to Musa. Gives up the free kick, but you don't mind that if you're the coach for Sacramento. Dropped in. One for Damas to chase. Can he get there? Just can't in time. That's been the... I guess just how this first half has gone, just too heavy on the pass, just running too quick for Damas to get there. There is that home run ball all the time there for Damas. The center back's going to allow that. But what about the ball to the creative players, to Henriquez, for example? It just, the channel just doesn't seem to be there. And then Henriquez can create something. But now that they're trying to go directly to Damas, it's too easy for the center backs to defend. And I think Colorado has to go back to basics put Hanya back on the left-hand side, maybe put Tahada on that wide right and bring another attacking player in at the right wing at the right wing position and just build the ball up from the outside and come in, similar to Sacramento, simplify things. Foul goes against Ronald Damus and the home crowd as well as Damus making their frustrations known. We've got just 30 seconds of the minimum six remaining. Sacramento. Ball forward, referee's flag stays down at the byline. Gura cross goal. Important intervention from behind by Hanya. Maybe goal saving, and he's going to just drive forward at the left hand side. Damus trying to give it back to him. Earns a side to throw in. Man, almost a chance to almost kill the game off. As we entered into halftime, Gura gets there in time and plays it across. Yet again, Gura finding that soft spot on the left hand side of Colorado. An excellent tackle in the end. That will do it for our first 45 minutes. Referee blowing for it. 2-0 Sacramento. Final thoughts from that first half, Ryan. I think Sacramento has shown why they are challengers for the USL 2024 championship. They showed their composure. They showed their technical ability in the last third. And also in the defensive third, playing around the Colorado press, which created chances for themselves further up the pitch. Been a great first 45 minutes for Sacramento Republic. In the fifth minute, Trevor Ammon got the goal scoring rolling, and the 26, Russell Cicerone followed him up. And at halftime, they hold a 2 0 lead on the road, trying to stay unbeaten in 2024. At the break, it's Colorado Springs switchbacks nil, Sacramento Republic FC2. We'll be back in a moment for some halftime content on ESPN. Thank you, Jay Chimino. You are the true champion. Thank you, Jay, for your vision of creating a new state park, for letting your spirit shine, and always putting people first. And being a friend to all. This April, we're saying thanks, Jay, and continuing his legacy of giving back. For every car sold, we'll make a donation to five community-focused organizations. Our thank you to an extraordinary man. The moment you call McDevitt, an action plan is put into place right away to get you the help you need. Each case and each client is different, with different needs and solutions. Your attorney and team immediately investigates every aspect of your crash and injuries. We track down all the paperwork and deal directly with the insurance company for you. We keep you in the loop every step of the way, fighting to get you max money for your injuries. And you never pay us a dime until we get money for you. McDevitt. at Widener Field. Jason Aldean. He is fine. We're celebrating 719 Day in Colorado Springs with country's biggest 
star and you. Tickets on sale now at switchbacksfc.com or y969.com. It's halftime here in Colorado Springs, presented by Widener Apartment Homes. At the break, Sacramento Republic holding a 2-0 edge over the switchbacks. We'll see what the second 45 minutes has in store for us. Should be an interesting 45 minutes. Well, tonight's honorary healthcare professional of the match is Jason Chan, a clinical pharmacist at Penrose Hospital. Thank you, Jason, for all you've done to help our community. The healthcare professional of the match is sponsored by Olson Plumbing and Heating. It's hard to believe that we're entering our 10th season. We set out on a mission to bring professional sports to Colorado Springs, but we quickly realized that it's about much more than that. It's about you. It's about us. It's about community. Many of you have been here since the beginning, some of you only recently. But for the last 10 seasons, we've been building something truly special through the highs and the lows, we know we can always count on you. And that's why we do it for the Springs. 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 Do it for the Springs. We do it for the Springs. For the Springs is a reminder of why we come to work every day, why we put our games on in the field, why we shake hands, celebrate, hug, give high fives around the stadium. We're here for the community. We're here for the Springs. We're here to build relationships and tell stories. most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. Yeah, trick. I said what I said. I don't care how pink town red. If you can survive this, it's going to make the whole story that much better. The bright horses are broken free from the fields. For the women's game. They want to see women's soccer, they want to play women's soccer, and that's what we're building at the USL. doesn't care who you are or why you hurt, but pain can be mastered if you know the way. Fight back with Tiger Balm's legendary herbal power. Trusted for over a hundred years, our proven blend of camphor, menthol, and essential oils tames pain with the strength and speed of the tiger so that you can rise above pain and get back to living. This is the way of the tiger. Time at Widener Field. It's currently 2-0 edge for Sacramento Republic on the road against the Switchbacks on the 
boys are staking five matches unbeaten here in 2024. We can look more broadly at the USL Championship. First off with some news and notes, 16 championship clubs will be entering the third round. Neither of today's teams where those matches will be taking place between April 16th and 17th. You can also vote on March Player of the Month nominees at uslchampionship.com. Maxi Rodriguez may be a player of intrigue. He had an assist and the game-winning goal versus Indy making himself the player of the week. Those are news and notes from across the league. Been a massive day across the league. A lot of goals already. You can see from yesterday, 3-3 between Tulsa and Phoenix. 5-3 between Lou City and Indy 11, making that one just an unbelievable game on CBS. Eight goals combined. Orange County taking a 2-0 edge with Detroit City also with a 1-0 game. Yeah, Lou City again showing their pedigree coming over Indy 11. That's a 5-3. That's eight goals in 19 minutes. Boy, what a, what a big moment, and that team stepping up in a big moment. It was a great opportunity on CBS. We can look ahead now with some scores live as well as upcoming. Still a nil-nil between Rhode Island and Charleston. A draw between Tampa Bay and Pittsburgh going final there. With some upcoming games, Las Vegas against San Antonio, Oakland Roots against Monterey Bay. Pittsburgh Riverhounds first point of the season, and we're in week number four. A surprise if you would have said that four weeks ago, but first point for them. We can also look ahead now with some upcoming games across the USL Championship. It's going to be an interesting one to see with the upcoming games. Still no points. The next five here. Any games that stand out here for you, Ryan, as a potential avenue for points? Uh, all the way to Hartford Athletic. Maybe they can get, get some points there, but it's a tough road ahead of them. Phoenix Rising are the real deal in front in the West. Indy 11 are no slouch. Oakland Roots are no slouch. El Paso, well, that's going to be a tussle. Hartford, maybe you want to check that one off. But boy, they have a long road ahead of them, Colorado. Forget the, op the opposition, they have to figure it out inside. Indeed they do. We'll see what they have in the second 45 minutes in this match here today. At the break though, down two goals to nil. On the other side of the break, we'll show you our first half highlights. Currently, 2-0 Sacramento over Colorado Springs. Injured in a crash? Get McDivitt and you get a firm dedicated to every single detail of your case. We have the knowledge and resources to investigate the crash and your insurance company's small print. Details matter. That's why we dive deep into every aspect of your case. This gives us the firepower we need to make the insurance company pay you the money you deserve. We never ask you to pay a penny until we get you max money for your injuries. Online at McDivittLaw.com. McDivitt. Thank you, Jay Chimino. You are the true champion. Thank you, Jay, for your vision of creating a new state park, for letting your spirit shine, and always putting people first. And being a friend to all. This April, we're saying thanks, Jay, and continuing his legacy of giving back. For every car sold, we'll make a donation to five community-focused organizations. Our thank you to an extraordinary man. Moments away from our second 45 minutes between Colorado Springs and Sacramento, where currently they have a 2-0 edge. The visitors do. We'll see if they can stay five matches unbeaten and go to 11 points through five games, or if Colorado Springs can get their first points of 2024. Jack Edwards, Ryan Davis here with you in the broadcast booth. Our first half highlights brought to you by Broadmoor Cryotherapy. In the fifth minute, they got off to a great start, Sacramento Yeah, did. taking advantage of the soft spot on that right-hand side. Gur, as usual, ever overlapping. Good ball into the middle. Brings it back inside, Cicerone attacks, and he finds that guy, Arman. The first touch gets past the defender, the second touch, back of the net. Clinical finish from the man who had 23 as a League One record in 2023. He's got four goals now in 2024. Good for joint second most in all of the league, and by far the leading goal scorer for Sacramento in 2024. And now jumping to the 24th minute 
Opportunity potentially in the attack. A great ball picks out Enriquez. He's got Damos in the box and the shot going just over the goal. I, you know, I have to say good defending here. Just gets into the channel to block the shot from Damos. Excellent 1v1 defending. And now the second goal of the match will be coming here. Ross just sliding it to Cicerone. Similar dribbling to the first goal, but he'll take it himself this time. Armand makes the run, opens up the channel for Cicerone, and you just can't teach this, Jack. This is pure skill and talent. And what a finish by Cicerone. He's been doing this for a long time in the USL. Does it again tonight for Sacramento, and they look like champs. 40th minute now. It's a good first half, a lot of control. But Akwe, the pass just under hit here. Amon, could he get to it? Herrera got there first. Big time challenge to keep things at 2-0. We look at our first half stats brought to you by Broadmoor Cryotherapy as well. The shots just not there for Colorado Springs so far. Five already for Sacramento and two of them, of course, hit in the back of the net. Yeah, Sacramento using that little uh, less possession that they do in Colorado and being penetrative with those passes. Dinking the ball to the corners, either Gu or Sanchez running onto it. And then Lopez and Cicerone go to work with Arman when the width is created. But possession for Colorado, they have to do more with it. They have to be a little bit more direct and have to link up Henriquez with Damos going into the second half. They got a few subs prepared for this one. Colorado Springs do at the break. You imagine they would want to switch things around after being down two goals. Now you can already see Coa Santos as well as Tyreek McGee in that huddle right there as well as Quincy Herman. So three subs made at halftime for the hosts. Feels like you do kind of want an injection of some fresh legs, fresh blood at halftime. Let's see if Coa Santos goes out to that right-hand side and play a traditional right wing back position. And we have Hanya coming out to the left-hand side, so a very traditional lefty on the left. Something you wanted to right see. Right on the right. So they can maneuver, maneuver the ball up on the sides as well and match up with Curran Sanchez defensively so they don't find those soft spots on the far side which Sacramento exploited in the first 45. Three subs at halftime. Speedy Williams was involved in the strings a little bit in that first half. He's got some new teammates around him on the pitch. It's going to be Sacramento who will get us back rolling. There we are, second 45 underway from left to right. The visitors in their white kits. And from right to left, the hosts. Springs trying to get things going. Anya already involved, moved to the left wing back role. As you mentioned, Ryan, something you wanted to see. You shuffled over, and it's Colorado Springs in the Ascension. McGee just puts that one into the box. Down was maybe the target, but it's hacked away. Potential chance over the top. It breaks kindly. One on one, just wide of goal. Trevor Ammon can't bury that one. And another potential let off for Colorado Springs. Well, Aqui's woes continues. He had a, not the best first half as it was his debut in the USL this season, but he gets beaten too easily by Ammon. And Ammon, his technique just lets him down. Can't find that last post. Again, great job by Herrera closing along that angle. He had seven assists in 2023 in the USL League One. He already has one this year in that first match of the season. He's trying to get number two on the day. All those subs, by the way, brought to you by the William J. Hibble Sports Medicine and Performance Center. Learn more at hibblecenter.org. Good bit of footwork. Hanya. Herman was with him. Anya trying to skip past. His side won't earn the throw. It's going to be with Sacramento. See that they have Quincy Herman on the pitch now for Colorado. Such a skillful young Frenchman. He was the most foul player in the match versus San Antonio. And because he's so good on the ball, players have to close down on him. And his technique allows him to get away from those challenges. And he's going to have to do that again tonight. If he can do that in the middle of the park, here he is on the ball for Colorado. He's going to open up for players like Damos and company. Gets it to Damos. Was he fouled from behind? He was. This is a dangerous free kick opportunity now. Three minutes into the second half. Foul there by Donovan. He was going through the back of his opponent. This 
Next free kick scoring opportunity brought to you by Underline, delivering gigabit fiber internet, underline.com slash COS. Right here, Ryan, are you going towards goal? Are you trying to curl it in? The wind, of course, a factor. Yeah, absolutely. I think it depends on how much of a, how much power human has. This is not one to, to curl. This is either all laces or you have to chip it to the last post. See Damus waving for it in the box. Five in black to aim for. It's curled in and it finds a friendly head, but it's put over the goal. It's a goal kick. Dangerous delivery. We can see it again here. Aqui is going to be staying at the ceiling fan tonight, wanting that one back. I think he tried to maybe nod it back into the middle, but the technique let him down. And he missed a point blank opportunity. Great delivery by Herman, by the way. Herman putting that one in, making his fourth appearance. Played his graduate season at North Carolina in 2023. 10 goals, seven assists, tied for the most in goals and most assists for the school in 2023. He's a third team All-American. We listened to Coach Chambers talk to us about converting chances. It's still the hardest thing to do in this sport, yeah. to score goals. And an opportunity like Acqui just had, you want to see that being capitalized upon. But again, it's, it's, it's harder to do than what, it see, than what it seems like on the screen or on the field. Definitely. So you can understand Acqui's plight, but you can understand the coach's plight as well. Things are being created, chances have to be converted, or else it's going to be all downhill. We mentioned just the XG, the expected goals they've had so far this year as Herman tries to win it back. That first match against Miami, we'll back to this in a moment. Tejada, can he get there? Does get across to it. Fires that one in. Hanya, oh, just over the goal. Goal kick there, another great chance for Colorado Springs. Goes begging, it's still 2-0. Well, it's contagious at the moment. It's a virus in the dressing room. This time, Juan Tejada doing the dirty work. He presses, gets past one outside on left foot into the path of Hanya. Jack, you gotta bury those. What I was mentioning was that first match against Miami, 1.85 expected goals, none in reality. 1.7 expected goals against Detroit, just one goal. 0.78 expected last time out against San Antonio on the road, and none in that one. Overall, four and a half expected goals, just one goal this season so far. One of those statistics, we didn't talk about big chances created. Those are two big chances created in about 60 seconds. Yep. If they converted both of those, the score is 2-2. That's a whole different game. They've created the chances though. The subs have been involved quite lively since coming on. It's a free kick Lopez brought down. Rodrigo, Rodrigo Lopez is re reminding McGee that he's 36 years old and he needs to sit down for just a little bit longer. Just give me a second there, McGee, and I'll be back up. Lopez. Mark Briggs describing his leadership as absolutely incredible. Extraordinarily experienced. Maybe takes a bit longer to get up after the foul at 36 years old, but brings... He's, he's earned that right. He's earned that right. Yes. He's played several stints now for Sacramento, wearing the captain's armband. Full-fledged international for El Salvador at 36. This one intercepted by Tejada. Hanya. He may also be wanting that chance back, but he's going to try and bring in his center forward. Damus gets there. And it's well tracked. It went by Donovan. Comes across, gets a foot to it. playing that one across. I feel like we didn't say his name a single time in that first 45 minutes, kind of playing on that left-hand side. We'll see what he can do as this is a nice, tight interplay. Williams asking a lot from his teammate Santos, and it ends up rolling out of play for a goal kick. Love the interchange between the two Jamaicans, Williams and McGee. Little one-two, little one-two again. And they went to the right wing back to get into the action. Just three goals conceded in four and a half games for Sacramento. Defensively, always very astute. Two clean sheets in the campaign so far. If you exclude that first match against Orange County with just the 2-2 match it was there, just one goal conceded in their last three games and obviously none so far in this one. Tejada trying to pick out Santos. Slightly under hit. Now Cicerone. Gurr making the run. Ammon, top of your screen as well. Wow. Cicerone, great footwork. Ammon in acres of space. Can't pick him out. Still has another friendly face. That one just off. Maybe if he was able to get that pass to Ammon, could have been a good chance. 
expected more from Rodrigo Lopez in that position. His little dink didn't get over, did not even get over the first defender. But what about Cicerone again? Minusing players as he goes by. And he had a window of opportunity to pick out the player on the far left side, but had to pick out Lopez instead. Aqua trying that one forward, but it goes all the way through to Vitiello. I believe it was Sanchez on that far left side that Cicerone had that little window of opportunity. Fired into the feet of Ammon and it bounces back to Gurr. Ammon with it. Just taken off of his foot. Oh. Anya, nice bit of footwork. That's just a cynical foul. That will likely produce the yellow card. Nick Ross will be booked. Well, that all started with Anya. He pulled back creates the room, and then yellow card, of course, because Ross is now out of position. Yellow card been issued to Nick Ross for Sacramento Republic. Caution sponsored by Diverses Health, mental health and well-being for all. Remember to take a moment to breathe. Becomes the second player for Sacramento in the book. We had a, in that moment of chaos, listed also getting yellow cards in that first half. Just a bit of pushing and shoving was Christian Herrera, as well as James Chambers for, Sac or for Colorado Springs, rather. So three yellows listed for Colorado Springs, two now for Sacramento after the yellow for Ross. Tejada returns it where he got it from, but it's poked away. Nice bit of defensive work. Ross on a yellow now, so has to be careful in that midfield pivot. Because they're so organized, Sacramento, they keep their shape for such long periods. Even when the defender got a, a toe poke to the ball, it went exactly to where he wanted to create a counter-attack. Keeping that shape for long periods of time takes discipline, and Sacramento have oodles of that. Turned over, Lopez, Ammon making the run, rolls it off for Cicerone. Patience here in the attack, allows numbers to get back for Colorado Springs, but they still have a few. The pass is behind Gurr there, I think. Cicerone a little bit frustrated, maybe with himself and his teammate, a combination of the two. Want to see Lopez be more aggressive when he stole that ball, waiting for Cicerone and going lateral, completely takes his sting out of the situation, allows Colorado to come back. You feel the six-year-old has to get up on his horse you had the, and attack. You had the Ammon one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. You had the potential chance for Cicerone to slide in a teammate. You also had that one. You've had a few moments to try and kill this one off, but Colorado Springs staying in this. Yeah, we talked about the two big chances they created. Uh, looks like they're starting to get back into the game, dominating possession in the second half. Like the fact that they have two, two natural wide players now, so they always have that outlet to advance the ball. Duke Lacroix, another former Sacramento Republic player, 2021 to 2022. He played for Sac Republic. That seems to be the game plan, right? Just go to Sacramento and just try and buy their players. I think that's uh, a safe strategy yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. yeah. You, gr you groom them or buy them. Herman lofted forward. It's intercepted by Vitiello. Like the switch up instead of going laterally to go direct. Try to keep the defense honest. Ammon, was he fouled by Akwe? No, he wasn't. He's perplexed. To throw for Colorado Springs. Akwe is being physical as he could be right over the back of Amon. It's about as tough a test as you can get for your first start here with your new side is yeah. Trevor Ammon and Russell Ciceroni, the forwards that you'll frequently match up against. Good footwork by McGee. Bates to White. He'll get it back. First time ball. Gets it out. Mahoney, Santos, McGee making the run to stretch play to the right. Poor intervention on the pass, aiming for Damus. Williams. Poked out by Lopez. Everyone in white except for Trevor Ammon was behind the ball there. Tejada. Herman, it will squeak through. And drag it away from his opposite number. Tejada. He's got McGee, he's going to look in fields, he's got Williams. Right now, Colorado is sort of overthinking things. Some of the open passes they're looking off. Hanya 
trying to just drive this one into the box himself. Damos on the turn. It spins away from him, and it's able to be sliced forward. But you can see kind of the, the gears going in the brains where it's just... They're, try, they're trying to be creative, but by doing that, they're slowing things down a little bit. The passes have to be quicker and sharper. There are two balls in the field there. So referee will pause play, allow them to correct that. I just mentioned the word shape a little while ago for mm -hmm. Sacramento. That's part of a system, a way of playing. Yep. And, the, and the players get used to the way of playing. So Colorado just doesn't seem to have their system down pat in the last third Players are thinking too much rather than reacting. And look like we have a Sanchez down. But the players are, are not re they're, they're not they're re sorry, they're thinking yes. rather than reacting. So the pace of play in the last third is not there to be penetrative. This injury stoppage brought to you by Common Spirit Health. We'll see if this will cause the first swap of the game for Sacramento Republic. Well, the worst injuries are when no players are around. It looks like Sanchez may have tweaked something when he tried to clear this ball right there. Yeah, just looks like maybe he expected to get more of the ball than he did and just kind of throws off his footwork a little bit. Definitely feeling the effects a bit. I tell you what, he's had a great game, sorry, great game, just like her on the left side, creating that space and that ability for Sacramento to get their shape and move, and move the ball up the pitch. Sanchez, 21 years of age. Made 33 appearances in 2023. One assist. The natural replacement for Sanchez is Villarreal. Let's see if he comes in. There are some subs being prepped for Sacramento Republic. They'll be their first two of the game. They already have four from Colorado Springs. Now the visitors will get in on the action. Rafael Haurigi as well as Jonathan Ricketts are queued up to potentially come into the game. But after a, as you mentioned Ryan, good first 60 minutes from Sanchez, looks like he will come out of the game. Currently 10 v 11 for Sacramento, down a player as Sanchez feeling the effects. Subs will come, next moment we'll see. Mahoney, can they press on this advantage? Herrera coming out of nowhere, just put a foot through it. And will go to his opposite number, and we'll go back to Vitiello. Stat popping up here, Ronaldo Damus attempting just three passes in that first half. I imagine you want to see him get more involved in the second 45. Yeah, but I don't I don't want it to be direct. I think there has to be a player in between him and the midfield. And that's what Henry Kez was, but he never really got involved in the game. I think Juan Tahara can do that. And I think Speedy Williams in that center midfield position has to take more responsibility and push further up the pitch. And him by him doing that will allow players to come around him and then create more opportunities and space for others. So he has to be braver with the ball at his feet. Speedy Williams. That one nearly breaking through. Tejada on the press. Just nice turn by his opponent to get his body in the way. And that will offer us a chance for three new faces for Sacramento Republic. Damia Villader. Rafael Haurigi and Jonathan Ricketts all going to come into the match. You can see Rodrigo Lopez has his number put up. 36-year-old captain will come off after just an hour. Out there, Sanchez as well. You saw him just with the slight injury on the far side coming off. Lopez off, Sanchez off. And you also see Trevor Ammon embracing. He'll be the third substitute, the first goal scorer of our match. All of these substitutions brought to you by the William J. Hibble Sports Medicine and Performance Center. Learn more at hibblecenter.org. Well, Ricketts is usually used as a right wing back to deputize Gert. So I want to see who plays in Lopez's attacking position if they push someone else up from midfield. 
Or is it exactly going to be wickets for player for player swap? Interesting. He scored the winner last time out. Was that a foul? Referee says no, it wasn't. A chance for Haurigi. And that one goes just wide. Could have been a fantastic introduction to the match for him. Just 19 years of age, looking for his first pro goal. That's a yellow card given to what looks to be Ekwe. Yellow card issued to Wahab Ekwe. Caution sponsored by Diversus Health. We can take a look at just this. How Rigi just runs across him a little bit. Well, you may lose some skill and some finesse, but now you have energy. You have more pressing up front with Ricketts and Hergui coming in. Coming in, And I think that's exactly what Sacramento are going to do. They're going to start managing the game with a little bit more of defensive pressure from up front. And I think that's why they got that turnover and that opportunity. So yes, Lopez and Arman, that skill and te technical ability is now off the pitch. But you still have Cicerone leading that line with Ricketts and Hergui behind him. It's been kindly. Sacramento still attack, and that yellow card a moment ago brought to you by Diversus Health, mental health and well-being for all. Remember to take a moment to breathe. Equi entering the referee's pocket. Cicerone assuming more or less the senior forward duties. Arigi coming on, 19 years of age. He has made one start this year so far, but most of his appearances in 2024 have been off the bench, but he's increasing in his influence. You also see Damia Villader. Looks like he's been the one who's slid into that left wing back role. Yeah, he's deputized Sanchez for the first half of this season anyway. So player for player swap. Arrighi just going to try and make life difficult, but it'll bounce to the six foot seven Herrera. And I don't want it to get play, um, fans the impression that they're just going to sit in a shell. These players that have come on are going to be very aggressive defensively. Now that they're on the pitch, as you can see, pushing right up and not allowing Colorado to settle. Gurr comes across from his right wing back roll, gets to it. Haurigi. there great pass Russell to Cerrone first time took one touch rather and then it was saved by Herrera tame in the end but a shot on target well the MO stays you see him get out wide and then bring the ball back in either in the air or on the ground and Cicerone's technique is again impeccable which straight to looks to be Viatello foul middle of the park McGee was clipped from behind as he had that one and look at the save by Herrera. He's just well fired into Cicerone from between the legs of the defender, but right into the hands of Herrera. Herman trying to get a foot to it. Again, just looking at Herrera, the goals that got past him, nothing he can do. Cicerone point blank, Arman point blank. And when he's asked to come up with a save or two, he's done exactly that. So Christian Herrera has been not perfect. No. But Excellent between the sticks. Made four saves, of yeah. course, had that important sliding challenge on Aman. So he stepped up in moments, but of course, it's hard to take those positives when your side is down two goals to exactly. nil. Exactly. Talking to James Chambers, they really want to see him take that next step and be regarded as one of the best goalkeepers in the division. They feel he's got the skill to do that. And he's shown that despite the losses. He's yeah. Done, he's done his part. 26 years of age, still a lot of growth for him. Switch of play, just puts that out of touch. Maybe a throw for the hosts. Just over 25 minutes, or under 25 minutes. Colorado Springs try and find a route back into this one. They had two very good chances right after halftime, and you wonder how different this game could have looked if one of those found the back of the net. You can see the shots, three for the hosts. None of them have tested. VTLO in goal. Most of the play for, for, for Colorado when they have the ball, not when they're pressing, has been in front of the, the Sacramento defense. They've never actually got around the Sacramento defense when they have possession. They've created the best chances with a counter press, and this is just an incredible skill. Luis Felipe just dancing with it. It's rolled into Ross now. Looks like he's dancing the samba as well. Luis Felipe 
becoming sixth player in club history to reach 100 appearances. Another very experienced player, middle of the park, 28 years of age. Second on the team in goals back in 2023 with seven of them. Signed all the way back in January of 2021. Referee will blow for a stoppage and play. There's a Colorado Springs player down. This injury stoppage is brought to you by Common Spirit Health. This looks to be Wahab Akwe is indeed the player who was feeling the effects. And you can see Herrera, the universal sign for maybe his day and his debut will come to a close here. Yeah, didn't get a chance to get on the pitch before this match. Obviously, he was nursing an injury. I know that injury seems to have reared its ugly head again. Looks like Akwe is going to have to leave the pitch again. I would love for him to be a big contributor this year, 27 years of age. He made 55 appearances, scored four goals across two years with Rio Grande Valley, heading over after their final season. Before that with Loudoun United, Richmond Kickers, New York Red Bulls too. You know, it a bit. just going back to Colorado, yes, we saw the, the intensity and they won. They had a, counter, a couple of counter-pressing situations where they missed the opportunity. But you just want to see the system be more refined. It just seems to be a lot of hesitation between the players at the moment. It's um, sort of stuttering as the ball tries to progress through the field. And then when they do get to the last, they, they look fairly predictable. So I think the system has to change a little bit. Um, go back to the right on the right, left on the left, go through the wide, um, wide channels, then bring the ball back in. Exactly what Sacramento is doing, keeping it simple. They pivoted to a back four as they're down a man temporarily. It's a chance now, driving with some speed, and in the end, just running out of space and crashing into a billboard. Herrera came off his line to make life difficult. McCoy doing a great job, just shepherding off Cicerone, exactly like a center back should do. Anya, his pass actually turns out to be a very good one. Williams able to curl that one in for Damus. Tejada making the run into the box, as you can see. Damus, McGee, corner kick. Opportunity from a set piece. We'll see what they can generate from this. This corner kick brought to you by Pikes Peak National Bank. Bank well, be well, cheer loud. The Tyreek McGee, the man over it. Twenty minutes to go. Stands it up. Tejada got ahead to it. it. Was always a tough angle up the near post. Yeah, good run by the Panamanian. Should have flicked it on rather than go for goal there. But still, you have to love the aggression, the inventiveness. Good ball by McGee. Picked out his man. But you want to see that helped on to the last post. Heavy touch. Unforced error gives a throw in in the attacking half for Colorado Springs. It's so business like right now for Sacramento, understanding that their skilled players were running out of energy. Here's Tejada. It was a sub in the 40th minute of that first half, coming on for the injured Malik Foster. Williams. Herman got to it, but it's just cleared high. You can see the wind. Just take complete control. Rolls kindly. McGee shot blocked. That one's going to spin out. Another corner kick. This corner kick brought to you by McDivitt Law Firm. We are in your corner. In that corner is Tyreek McGee. They'll go quick. A lot of numbers in black in the box. Williams. Some space to pick out a pass. Damus. It's blocked. Herman trying to get a foot in. It's cleared away. Throw in. Good spell of possession, but yeah. not a great chance to show for it. Williams to McGee. Offering another option. Pokes it, trying to find Damus, but it's well intercepted. And now a chance to potentially break Cicerone. He's one-on-one. -on -one. Herrera, again, had to be perfect, and it was. 
And actually going to be kept in play by Hanya, and that's the kind of thing that a sweeper keeper can just completely flip around. Absolutely. Right back in possession, Colorado Springs. It's all about anticipation, and Christian Herrera picked his spot perfectly. The switch. Santos, it's well headed. He's going up against Villader. You know, Villader has not been involved in the game yet. He came, in, he came into the game for Sanchez. But they're so technically correct, Sacramento. They very rarely get caught out of position. There's a counter attack. Cicerone, as he looks up, there's a big orange shoot coming at you. And it's Christian Herrera to the rescue. Good angle here. Again, just has to be perfect, has to be confident in his abilities to get there, and he was. It's twice now he's had that defensive action quite far off the pitch. It's a free kick for Sacramento after a foul by Colorado Springs. So it's just dropped forward. Akwe, by the way, is back into the game. That was a tug. Referee whistles for a foul against Coa Santos. Sacramento are not going to be in a hurry here. No. They're going to play it short, keep some possession. Even if they do allow their center backs to go up, nope, they play it short. Very much in game management mode at the, at the, at the moment. I think we're hearing the one lone Sacramento fan in Colorado with the chant. It's a foul by Sacramento. It's a tough trip to make. It is a long trip. Great bit of movement. Tejada, you can see Damus waving forward in the box. He's one on one. Tejada has three in white around him. And a poor touch, but it will bounce kindly. Stood up. Santos just had to try and get a foot to it to keep it in play. Villadere wasn't fouled. So that's actually going to be a throw in for Colorado Springs. 15 minutes to go. There's another goal in this match. It's an offside. It's a pretty obvious one there. Just a moment of lapse in concentration. I was going to say, you imagine if there's another goal in this game for either side, we'll push it a bit more drama if it's Colorado Springs. Maybe thinking of that one moment. Two goals is it's a still it's a steep hill. But I think we have to go back to what happened in the, at the beginning of the second yep. half. The only way they're going to get that goal, Jack, from what we're seeing, is from them being without the ball and doing a counter-press situation, stealing the ball off of Sacramento, off of intensity, and creating two passes into the box. With them with the ball, the players just seem to be a little bit lost and don't have that injection of peace in the last third. McGee, it's a clever ball, picked out Herman. Again, just a great step. It looks as though Colorado is playing in their backyard, like a pickup game, where the players are sort of just being inventive. What they see is what they play. Mm -hmm. There doesn't seem to be a direct sort of plan in going forward and creating space. Ronaldo Damos in particular has been very well neutralized as Herrera had to be careful. But again, the wind just making any pass that has some air under it take some odd spins. And Damos has been very well neutralizing comparison to the forwards for Sacramento. Ammon and Ciceroni were heavily involved in this one for minute five when Ammon got his first goal of the game. First goal of the game for either side. Ciceroni, of course, following up with the goal in the 26th minute. Lacroix has it. Damos, on the other hand, had the one maybe half chance in the box that was put over the goal. Yeah, expert defending by Donovan to get a piece of that. Santos. Three with him in the box, curls it in. Doesn't beat the first man. McGee. Throw in for Sacramento. Chance now for another Sacramento substitute. Christian Pirano coming into this one, coming out Luis Felipe. Substitution brought to you by the William J. Hibble Sports Medicine and Performance Center. Learn more at hibblecenter.org 
Pirano on, Felipe off. What an option to bring off the bench in Christian Pirano. He's, he came from one of those Barcelona affiliate clubs in Buenos Aires. So he's going to fit right into that high technical, short passing, diminutive type player. And he's going to get right into the mix. And he's going to create space for other players. And it's going to be impossible for Colorado. Tight passing. Damus fires one. It's saved by Vitiello. You can see just the inventiveness of Damus to try and just get something off. Maybe not on his preferred foot. But put one on frame for the first time today. Well, Herman has been electric since he's come on. The Frenchman, here he is. Plays it right back into the pass of Damos. Left-footed shot. VTLO. Right place, right time, like a goalkeeper should. Expect him to make that save. That was the first shot on target of the match for Colorado Springs. Is there a read for that one? When no. First shot in the match? No. no. Okay. I think they missed an opportunity there. That would be, yes, yes. Big moment there, potentially gone begging as Dom was trying to get back involved. Gurr, looking for this as the referee's flag, didn't go up. They're appealing for it, it's a corner in the end. Looks like it was marginal. Harigi was onside and it's gonna be a corner kick. This one's going to be brought to you by T. Rowe Price, which you can invest with confidence. And now you want to know why they go out wide every opportunity they have. When you have players like Gur and Sanchez as your outlet, look at that delivery by Gur, picking off Hargreaves, coming inside from the left into the middle. Great defending in the end, but it just shows the danger when the ball gets to those players' feet. And guess who's on the ball now? Coming off the bench just a moment ago. Christian Pirano has a chance to just completely seal the three points. Curled in. It was dangerous. Found a friendly head. It's still with Sacramento, but it's just being knocked up into the air. Ross trying to just recycle that one out to Pirano. Trying to keep that in play. Goes out. Throw in. Another sub being prepped. This time for Colorado Springs. Alex Anderson will be coming on. Ronaldo Damus will have to look for the next match to be the one where he gets his first of his new colors. Substitution brought to you by the William J. Hibble Sports Medicine and Performance Center. You can learn more at hibblecenter.org. Well, I took a long look at Damus tonight. He did everything right. He ran off of the ball. He, he pressured. One more. Ciceroni in the box. A chance here. Big-time block. Pirano, another big-time block. Just putting their bodies on the line. Colorado Springs are keeping it at 2-0. Here's Herman. It's blocked. So even though they had a lot of expected goals created in the matches before, I think it was the exact opposite tonight, where Damos did everything correct. He worked hard. Any, any sort of daylight he had, he had, a, he had good technique on the ball. But I don't think the service was there. There was nothing actually penetrative getting onto his feet or in space for Damos. Everything was back to the goal or running into the challenge when the ball was over the top. Nothing really there for the centre forward to do anything. Williams. Herman. Nice turn. Herman, it's a big time challenge to stop his run after he turned an opponent. Qua, Ekwe, Tejada, Tejada trying the first time pass, it's blocked. Pass between the defenders is blocked. Put forward, Herrera collects. So we talk about Sacramento, how good they are going forward and how much they stay in shape, but they also stay in shape defensively as well. Constantly keeping the, the attacking player away from the goal. Anderson, was he brought down? Referee says, no, he wasn't. Donovan is pointing to the referee. I think the linesman had a different idea. Goal kick was the verdict. Second look at this one. Was there a foul in this one as Anderson turns past Donovan? Maybe a bit of contact but when the ball's that far away. Correct. There's no chance for Anderson to actually cross the ball in or to create something with the, with the ball at that point. Hey. 
Chested down. McGee. Herman. Nice bit of control. Herman into the box. It's blocked. It might spin for Santos, but he was offside, so the flag goes up. And that one just typifying today's performance. Nice moment. <laughs> yes. Herman, the shot blocked, but then just a Carl bit of Santos offside. bit of luck. Yeah. yeah. Again, just overrunning it. But Herman, again, he's been the best player on the pitch for this second half for Colorado. He's been creating chances for himself, as we saw, and for other players with Damas just about five minutes ago. And I think the Frenchman has just been, he's skillful, he's dynamic. And I think he needs to have more playing time for this Colorado team going forward. He started last time out, coming off from the bench at halftime today. Been a bright introduction. Gurr. Put out a play, throw in. McGee, poor pass. Sacramento to a Ciceroni. Haurigi making an option to his left. He gets it. Prana was the choice to the right. That was another example. Ciceroni completely overthinking it. Pirano was yawning with a huge channel on the right hand side. Tries to reverse onto the left. And gives Colorado to re a chance to reset. Goal and assist for Ciceroni today. You'll forgive the occasional lapse in Absolutely, judgment. Absolutely, yeah. He is, I think, player of the match for Sacramento. Definitely. Been a massive threat. He has that one taken off of him on that instance. Lacroix. Mahoney. And we came into the match talking about expected goal figures, notably for Colorado Springs. That numbers in today's match, 0.7 for Colorado Springs, 0.95 for Sacramento. Marginal difference there, but the big difference has been the clinical nature that the forwards for Sacramento have brought. Absolutely. We talked about the hardest thing to do in this sport is to get the ball in the back of the net. And Cicerone and Armand made it look so easy in that first half. And when you when you score goals, goals change matches. It gives Sacramento confidence on the road and it makes Colorado even that more desperate in their on their home pitch. And it makes it allows Sacramento to now manage the game up to 20 minutes ago. Off it into the channel. That one's gonna sit up. Santos will get there. He's got a teammate in support. It's taken off. Just good defensive work. The structure has been impenetrable from Sacramento. A few one-off chances, but they've been incredibly defensively. disciplined. Yeah. Everybody's staying compact, holding their runners. And then when they get forward, they understand the game plans to go out wide and come back in. See this? Go out wide. Ball's going to come back in. And at this point, time in their favor. They can just play this one. It's a good move to pick out the free man, Ross. Dangerous into the box. It's scraped through, but Herrera will pick up an easy one. He can just roll it in. Herman. Tejada. Good ball. Pass finds a teammate. McGee. Rolls it. Santos. His cross is blocked. It sits up again for him. Second try is blocked as well, and it's knocked forward. Unable to put some delivery in there. Well, Santos has not had the best of games since he's come onto the pitch on that far right hand side. Shane Wheat on now for Russell Ciceroni, just indicative of where this match is headed. Bringing off the attacking minded Ciceroni. Goal and an assist today for Wheat, the defender from Akron, Ohio. Substitution is brought to you by the William J. Hibble Sports Medicine and Performance Center. Learn more at hibblecenter.org. Well, before his move to Sacramento, Shane Wheat, 64 appearances for Pittsburgh River Hounds. He knows a thing or two about defending. Played under the coach, the legendary coach Bob Lilly, who loves nothing better than his centre backs. 
Now two forwards brought off for more defensive-minded players, Ricketts and Wheat coming on for Ammon and Cicerone. Just a few minutes left of the 90. We'll see how much additional we have. No goals, of course. No major stoppages. Oh. It's a good pass there. Pass blocked, and it's hacked away. Maybe Tejada might have been the option in that one, but it wasn't picked out. Herrera has to be careful trying to keep that in play. <laughs> he does just about enough. But well, he's wowing the crowd at the moment, and I think the Colorado crowd sort of needs that from their players. And Christian Herrera doing the job. Uh -oh. Knocked upfield. Throw in. I think at 6-7, you never look entirely coordinated when <laughs> that ball starts bouncing a little bit. Unless you want to grab it and dunk it or something. Uh, yeah. At, at that That's point, it. you know, yeah. grabbing it, not an option when no. he's 40 yards out of his goal. <laughs> Herrera, though, I think to his credit, you know, we'll touch more on him as the match continues to progress towards its conclusion. A, a tough break for the two goals. They were just really point-blank efforts. Amin just forcing him to go one way, he went the other, and then Ciceroni one on one. Yeah. Both those getting past him, but you know, stood tall on a few chances coming off of his line to make some interventions, some saves as well. And this coming off a great performance against San Antonio last week as well. So he's in form while the rest of the team isn't. Something to potentially build from. Just a goalkeeper that as much as confidence may be struggling, still capable of big moments to keep his side in the match. Tejada trying to come across, but Gur gets there first. Will be a throw as we tick over to the 90th minute. Juan Tejada, as they say, the shortest man with the longest hair on the field. And he's full of life. Pirano, oh. a sub as well, just using his skill to just kill some time. Look at the technique to hold the players off, though. That's three or four black shirts came at him, still held possession. And it seems to be the norm for Sacramento players. They have such good quality on the pitch and expectations for the players when they do arrive on the pitch. All the way back to Herrera. You can see the press by Sacramento is still on. Jared Timmer coming all the way from center back just to try and make life difficult, force them back. It's just professionalism at its highest in the Sacramento organization from back to front. They all seem to be on the same page. We've got stoppage time coming up here. Five minutes of it we will have at the end of this match. Stoppage time brought to you by Tick Tock Shop. We'll see if there's any last twists in the tail. No, I think that's awesome. This stoppage time brought to you by Tick Tock Shop. I think that's awesome. Clock. That is time. Cl clever. It's going to roll out towards the byline. It's hacked forward. Colorado Springs. Could they just make it an uncomfortable final five for Sacramento? Or can they just continue to be workmanlike in seeing this one out for a third win of the new season? Williams clips it forward. Anderson the target. He brings it into his spell. Hanya. It's clipped forward and it's no nonsense. Chested out of play. Jonathan Ricketts taking no risks there. It's a corner kick now. Corner kick brought to you by McDivitt Law Firm. Quickly taken. McGee fires it on frame, and Vitiello, calm hands with the shot on target, knocks that to the ground, and he'll kill more time off this clock. Well, it's the first time we've seen the Sacramento defenders not close down the angle, and they actually get a shot on goal. Good skill by McGee. All you have to do is play it into the Jamaican's path and let him just create turns on a dime. He lets it fly with Vitiello again, positioning. That is the number one ingredient for a goalkeeper. Herrera. <laughs> Has to be the 92nd minute because here comes the train. <laughs> Mahoney. It's long ball time now. Just try and knock it forward and find something in it. McGee. Trying to clip that one across. Powerful header away. Lacroix. Anderson rolls it. Santos fired back into the box. Takes a deflection. Herman, that one takes an awkward one. What a save by Vitiello. Makes it 
a less nervy end for Sacramento. Gets low with the right paw and parries that one away. It's a Pikes Peak National Bank corner kick on the near side. Well, it fell for the right person, Human, who's been the best player for Colorado. Outside of the foot, and cruel deflection, but Vitti Yellow, in the end, got the better of it. A chance now. Herman into the box after his chance went begging. Ekwe trying to find a teammate. It's knocked away. Again, Sacramento so tight, so disciplined. There are no passages, crevices for the Colorado players to creep through. They have to try to go around Jack and Santos. And Hanya have to deliver when the ball goes out wide. Santos will get this throw. Two minutes of the minimum of five remaining. Could have been in for a grandstand finish if that one just was a bit further out of reach of Vitiello, but he made a fantastic reaction save after the deflection. Keeping the clean sheet intact. Tejada. the Sacramento side that had the tie for most clean sheets in 2023 with Pittsburgh, 15 of them. They're on the verge, number three. Colorado Springs still in the attack, but it's taken over by Sacramento. Maybe a chance to break some numbers forward. It's a player down off the ball. They'll just drive it away. It's Timmer. Corner flag might be his friend. Great job by Timmer. Understanding what this game needs at the moment. They've been up against their own goal for the last couple of minutes. They finally get out of their own half, take it to the corner flag. And this is where Colorado has to start from. Final minute of the five. Big header at Anderson Fallon. Referee says no, it's going to let play continue. But you can see Sacramento just skipping past Colorado Springs. Pirano. Evades a few challenges, slides it off via Dare. It's Ricketts, rather. Go to the corner flag as he pushed down. Referee letting play continue. Anderson, he's got Tejada, skips past into the box. Alex Anderson just keeping his foot on it. Offside flag will go up, though. Coming from an offside position was Yosuke Hanyu, and that will be the last action of the match. Sacramento stay unbeaten. They take this one two goals to nil for 11 points through five games, while Colorado Springs still on the hunt for their first point under their new management. Yeah, Colorado tried to do everything right off of the ball, created some chances, but Sacramento Republic has been incredible in, again, discipline while defending, keeping their shape while going forward, and of course, the skilled players, Cicerone, Lopez, and Alman. Let's look at some of our moments and players of this game. First off, critical moment of the match brought to you by Common Spirit Health. Pass slightly under hit here. Game could have been completely gone before the first half ended. Big challenge by Herrera. Well, he had three incredible saves against San Antonio. Here's another big save against Sacramento tonight. And Christian Herrera doing everything right in a Colorado uniform. Boats are in. Groom Transportation Man of the Match is indeed Christian Herrera. Groom Transportation providing stress-free airport shuttle services between Denver and Colorado Springs. Just big time contributions at the back line, trying to offer a good, important role at the base. Final thoughts there for you, Ryan. I think he's been incredible. He's actually leading on the pitch on how to play and intensity. He's been anticipating the balls over the top when they do have a high back line. Christian Herrera been incredible, but Sacramento overall just seemed to be the more polished outfit. Colorado seems to have a hard time figuring out where to go next with the ball to then advance the ball and create opportunities. It's full time here, two goals to nail. They take it, Sacramento Republic do on the road. We can show you the full time highlights and stats, show you how they did it on the other side of this break on ESPN+. Plus.
The moment you call McDevitt, an action plan is put into place right away to get you the help you need. Each case and each client is different, with different needs and solutions. Your attorney and team immediately investigates every aspect of your crash and injuries. We track down all the paperwork and deal directly with the insurance company for you. We keep you in the loop every step of the way, fighting to get you max money for your injuries. And you never pay us a dime until we get money for you. McDivitt. Thank you, Jay Chimino. You are the true champion. Thank you, Jay, for your vision of creating a new state park, for letting your spirit shine, and always putting people first. And being a friend to all. This April, we're saying thanks, Jay, and continuing his legacy of giving back. For every car sold, we'll make a donation to five community-focused organizations. Our thank you to an extraordinary man. Welcome back to Widener Field. Full-time score, Colorado Springs, switchbacks nil, Sacramento Republic two. Jack Edwards and Ryan Davis here to round this one out for you. This one brought to you by Common Spirits Health. Full-time score, no points still under James Chambers. Four defeats, a tough start to the year for Colorado Springs, while Sacramento, fantastic out of the gates, five unbeaten. We're going to look at our full-time highlights brought to you by McDivitt. They got off to a great start, didn't they, Ryan? Fifth minute. Just jumping on things. This long ball forward, they're just going to do a fantastic job working through the defense. Yeah, they use the intensity of Colorado against them. They found the pocket out wide. Cicerone drives into the box. So much skill. Finds the main man. Aman gets past one, drives it home to take that 1 0 lead. But this all started with the out left, out, out wide to Gurr. Back into Cicerone. Aman with the finishing. Cicerone with the assist after a clever bit of dribbling. Four goals now for Trevor Ammon on the season. Jumped to the 26th minute now. He assisted one. He's going to claim one himself. Ross finds Cicerone and he does the rest. Ammon makes a little run, takes the defense with him, and then Cicerone drives the ball into space. And look at that finish, Jack. He gets into that penalty spot area and low corner pocket. No chance for Herrera, and it's 2-0 to the visitors. I took the 2-0 lead within 26 minutes. We'll jump down to the second half. There were some chances, Tejada getting on the end of a decent opportunity here. This was one of those moments where you look back and say, maybe if this one goes in, does the match look different? Absolutely. 2-1, momentum. It's all Colorado coming down the stretch, but Hanya did not convert. And 2-0 is too easy to defend. VTL come off his line strongly there, making the big time stop. We'll jump again now here. Ball into the box. Finds Herman. His shot takes a deflection. Vitiello keeps the clean sheet intact. Well, that's why they're one of the reasons why they're on top. Excellent goalkeeping by Vitiello. Huge deflection, but right place, right time. Full time stats brought to you by Groom Technology. Talk me through this, Ryan. Final thoughts from you. Sacramento's possession, only 38%, but it's productive possessions. Every time they got the ball, they hit the soft spots out wide, and then the ball came back in to their skilled players, Lopez, Cicerone, and Aman. Hence, he's in the 2 0 scoreline. Colorado, despite that possession, have a lot of work to do with the direction of that possession to make sure they create opportunities for their players. Still just one goal, no points in the year for Colorado Springs. Some things to work on while Sacramento Republic move on to 11 points. Well, it's been a fantastic broadcast to share with you. Up next with Colorado Springs, the road trip to Phoenix next weekend. As for Sacramento Republic, taking on FC Tulsa at home. For our entire broadcast crew and Ryan Davis, I've been Jack Edwards saying so long from Widener Field. Final score, Colorado Springs nil, Sacramento Republic two. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.